Cyprus is a tadpole-shaped island about one and a half times the size of Puerto Rico. In the eastern Mediterranean, it's just 70 kilometers from Turkey and 100 kilometers from Syria, and has been a stepping stone between Africa, the Middle East, and Europe for thousands of years. From Antalya, Turkey, we flew through Istanbul to the Erchan Airport in the north side of the island. 40 minutes by taxi to where we stayed in Girne. A coastal town of 46,000, Girne, Kyrenia in Greek, is the third most populous in the north. Our apartment building was on the outskirts of downtown. Next to two vacant lots and the skeleton of another building. The rooftop had a good view of the town, with Turkey in the distance across the Med and the Kyrenia Mountains behind, which can get pretty dramatic looking when clouds roll in. The lot behind us had a beautiful flowering almond tree that hosted a daily morning meeting of the Pigeon Social Club. The lot beside us was initially a complete disaster. But by the next week, a backhoe had cleaned it up quite nicely, and we were glad to have both the pile and the noisy backhoe gone. Unfortunately, empty and derelict lots and dilapidated buildings were common around us. But there were also very nice historic, as well as modern buildings nearby, and lots and lots of cars. Girne is heavily car focused, many times at the expense of the sidewalks and at the expense of mass transit. These minibuses are the standard, with limited routes and seating. There seem to be more dedicated buses for universities including this eclectic one. Universities are big business here, accounting for a quarter of the GDP of Northern Cyprus. A 10 minute walk from our flat, the Wednesday market was our main weekly source of fresh, delicious produce. Not as cheap as Antalya, Turkey, but a week's worth was still only about $12. They also had clothes for sale, and a surprisingly good selection of high-quality and inexpensive kitchenware. A 15-minute walk from us, Kyrenia Harbor is the heart of Old Town. Dominated by 16th century architecture, the harbor overlooks the Mediterranean and has several nice places for a waterside lunch. The nearby waterfront has a wide promenade and a reminder of Girne's past as a fishing village. Modern buildings include an English bakery with a water view and several hotel casinos, including the Arkin Colony with its gorgeous peacock window. Arkin Group, a local conglomerate that founded the Arch University, whose downtown headquarters is adorned with its Rodin-inspired sculpture, exhibits an impressive private Rodin collection with free admission to the public. Overlooking the harbor, Kyrenia Castle has seen a lot of the history of the area. The Byzantines built the first structure in the seventh century, including this small chapel, as a guard against Arab pirates. In the 12th century, it was captured by Richard Lionheart of England on route to the Third Crusade. The resulting Crusader Kingdom of Cyprus expanded the castle. Uphill from Girne and Kyrenia Fort, the 13th century Gothic Belapais Abbey was also built during the Crusader Kingdom of Cyprus period. In addition to being a home for monks and priests, the abbey was likely also a refuge for townspeople whenever Arab pirates would attack. 
The present castle was built when the Venetians controlled the island in the 16th century. When the Ottoman Turks captured Cyprus in the late 16th century, the population was predominantly Greek Orthodox Christian, and a significant Turkish Muslim minority grew over the next 400 years. Greek roots go very deep here, as the not-to-be-missed shipwreck museum attests. 3,300 years ago, Kyrenia was colonized by Greeks following the Trojan War, naming it for their town from the Peloponnese. 2,300 years ago, a Greek trading ship sank a mile offshore. Discovered by a Greek Cypriot diver in the 1960s, the remains of the hull are remarkably well preserved and on display. as are the many artifacts from its cargo. Including some of the 400 wine amphorae that it carried. After the Ottomans defeated Venice in 1570, they controlled Cyprus until 1878, when Britain made a deal for administrative control. The Suez Canal had just opened and Cyprus let them protect trade with India. At the outbreak of World War I in 1914, Britain fully annexed the island. This cemetery nearby to us was opened at the beginning of the British period, and now is a memorial to British dead, killed from 1955 to 1959, when Greek Cypriot nationalists revolted against British rule demanding unification with Greece. The Republic of Cyprus became independent in 1960, though Britain kept two military zones. In 1960, the Greek and Turkish Cypriot populations were distributed throughout the island. But ethnic tensions, violence and displacement escalated until 1974, when Greek nationalists staged a coup d'etat followed by a Turkish invasion that landed in Kyrenia and finished in Famagusta. By the end of 1974, the island was partitioned into the predominantly Greek Republic of Cyprus, the de facto Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, and a buffer zone controlled by the UN. Today, Northern Cyprus is officially occupied territory recognized only by Turkey and its continued existence is fully tied to Turkey, who maintains a permanent military force on the island, as well as undersea umbilical connections. Most of the fresh water comes by pipeline, and all of their telecom is connected by undersea copper cable. Not fiber optics, so internet and mobile speeds are limited and unreliable. The power grid is also lacking, and we experienced regular outages while we were there. The financial and banking systems are both tied to Turkey, and cryptocurrency is widely accepted in retail and even real estate as an alternative. As in Turkey, Girne neighborhood mosques play daily calls to prayer, and large mosques dot the countryside. Though Girne's Greek Orthodox churches are open now only as museums. But there is one small active Catholic church. Northern Cyprus is about the size of Long Island, New York. And there was much to explore outside of Girne, which we'll cover in our next video, so stay tuned.